Newton's three laws of motion are very important to understand in both physics and physical science, as they are the basis of understanding the motion of objects. Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Newton's second law of motion states that the force of an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. And Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now, you have probably heard of these three rules before, but do you know what they are actually telling us when it comes to describing the motion of the objects? Let's dive in now and look at each of these three rules in more detail. We will be looking not only at each of these three laws of motion in more detail, but also how to solve for force and momentum, which relate specifically to the second and third laws. Make sure you stick around so you can see how to solve the force and momentum equations. In order to understand Newton's first law of motion, it is important that you remember the information we covered in our forces video. If you do not remember this information or need a refresher, please check out our video on this topic. Newton's first law of motion states that an object in motion will stay in motion and an object at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. In other words, if a soccer ball is sitting on the ground, not moving, the only way it will start moving is if an outside force acts upon it. An example of an outside force acting upon the soccer ball would be kicking the soccer ball. When the soccer ball is kicked, a force is applied and therefore the soccer ball starts moving. Or if I have a shopping cart that is rolling through the parking lot, the shopping cart will keep moving until an outside force acts upon it to stop it. Examples of an outside force acting upon the shopping cart could be friction with the ground or you sticking your hand out and using your force to stop the cart. Newton's first law is also known as the law of inertia. Inertia is just the tendency of an object to resist a change in motion. If an object is resisting a change in motion, then that means it wants to keep moving in the direction it was moving. As Newton's first law tells us, it will take an outside force acting upon the object in order for it to change its motion. A classic example of this is when you're riding in the car and the car suddenly comes to a stop. When this happens, you continue to move forward until the seatbelt stops your forward movement. You have probably felt this before, being jerked backwards by the seatbelt when the car slams on its brakes. To summarize, Newton's first law is also known as the law of inertia. This means that if an object is at rest, it will continue to remain at rest until acted upon by an outside force. If an object is moving, it will continue to move until acted upon by an outside force. Now you know Newton's first law of motion. Newton's second law of motion states that when a net force is acting on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of that net force. Acceleration just means to speed up, slow down, or change directions. So what Newton's second law is telling us is that if you have a net force acting on an object, then that object is either going to speed up, slow down, or change directions. In our example here, a man is pushing a lawnmower. He is applying a force in the forward direction or to the right. According to Newton's second law, the lawnmower would then accelerate or start moving to the right because that is the direction the force is being applied. Newton's second law also has a formula that goes with it, and we can better understand the law by understanding the formula. The formula is F equals ma, where F is the force in Newtons, m is the mass in kilograms, and a is acceleration in meters per second squared. This formula shows us the relationship between force mass and acceleration. The larger the mass of the object, the more force it will take to accelerate it. The smaller the mass, the less force it will take to accelerate it. And then finally, if you apply the same force to two different objects, the lighter object will move faster and the heavier object will move slower due to their different masses. For example, if I'm trying to get a car or a pencil to start moving, the car is going to require more force to get it to start moving because it has a greater mass, whereas the pencil is going to require less force to get it to start moving because it has a smaller mass. The weight of an object is simply the force of gravity on that object. This is different from the mass. The mass of an object is just the amount of matter in that object. You can think of mass as being how much stuff an object is made up of, and weight is gravity's pull on that mass. So if you are on the Earth and then travel to the moon, your mass will stay the same, but your weight will change because gravity is different on the Earth versus the moon. We talked in our forces video about gravity and the acceleration due to gravity. Remember that gravity is just a force that pulls us towards the Earth. 
we mentioned that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. This number will be important when solving for the weight of an object. Because weight is just a specific type of force, we can look at our previous formula, F equals MA, and use that to solve for weight using a very similar formula, W equals MG, where W is weight in newtons, M is still mass in kilograms, and G is going to be gravity, or the acceleration due to gravity, which we have already said is 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. Notice that the unit for weight is still newtons as weight is just the force of gravity. To summarize, Newton's second law tells us that if a net force is applied to an object, that object is going to accelerate, meaning it will speed up, slow down, or change directions. We can solve for force using the formula F equals MA, and we can solve for weight using the formula W equals MG. The formula that we use to solve Newton's second law is F equals MA, where F is force in newtons, M is mass in kilograms, and A is the acceleration in meters per second squared. We can solve this formula by knowing two of the variables and then we'll solve for the third. An easy way to solve this formula is to use the triangle setup shown here. When using the triangle, all you have to do is cover up the letter you're solving for and the triangle will tell you whether to multiply or divide. So if I'm solving for force, I cover up the F and the triangle tells me to multiply mass times acceleration. I know this because the variables are next to each other. If I'm going to solve for the mass, I cover up the M, and the triangle tells me to do force divided by acceleration. I know this because the variable F is on top of the variable A. And finally, if I'm solving for acceleration, I'll cover up the letter A, and the triangle tells me to divide force divided by mass. I know this because the variable F is on the top of the variable M. Now let's look at some practice problems. Our first problem says that a 10 kilogram bowling ball would require what force to accelerate down an alleyway at a rate of three meters per second squared. So the first thing I need to do is figure out what the question is asking me to solve for. I see in the question is asking me what force would be required, so I know I'm solving for F. So in my triangle, I'm gonna cover up the letter F and that will tell me to do mass times acceleration. So now that I know that I can write F equals MA. And from here, all I have to do is pull the numbers from my problem and plug them into the formula. I can get the mass of 10 kilograms and plug that in. And I can get the acceleration of three meters per second and plug that in. Now all I have to do is put this in my calculator. I can do 10 times 30 to get a final answer of 30 newtons. This means that if a 10 kilogram bowling ball needs to accelerate down the alleyway at a rate of three meters per second, a force of 30 newtons must be applied to it. In our second problem, the question says, what is the mass of a truck if it produces a force of 14,000 newtons while accelerating at a rate of five meters per second squared? Again, I'm going to look at the question and see that it tells me to solve for the mass. So in my triangle, I know I need to cover up the letter M. This tells me if I want to solve for the mass, I need to do the force divided by the acceleration. So I can take the numbers from my problem. I have a force of 14,000 newtons and an acceleration of five meters per second squared, and I can plug those into my formula. Now in my calculator, I just have to do 14,000 divided by five, and that gives me a final answer of 2,800 kilograms. That means that the mass of this truck is 2,800 kilograms. In our final practice problem, we're going to look at how to solve for the acceleration. Our question says, what is the acceleration of a softball if it has a mass of 0.5 kilograms and hits the catcher's glove with a force of 25 newtons? So when I look at my triangle, I'm going to cover up the letter A, and that tells me to do force divided by mass. So from here, I can just pull the force and the mass from the problem and plug them into my formula. And that gives me 25 divided by 0.5. I can plug this into my calculator and that will tell me that the acceleration of the softball is 50 meters per second squared. Newton's third law of motion tells us that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. In other words, if object one is exerting a force on object two, that object two is exerting that exact same force back to object one. 
Some examples include jumping on the trampoline, sitting in a chair, and letting go of a balloon. When looking at examples of Newton's third law, it is helpful to look at the action and the reaction. When you jump on the trampoline, you apply a force downward onto the trampoline, which is the action, and the trampoline then applies a force upwards. This is the reaction, and is also why you get propelled up in the air. When you are sitting in a chair, you are applying a force down onto the chair, which is the action, but the chair is applying the same force back up to you, which is the reaction, and that is why you are able to sit in the chair and not fall through the chair and hit the ground. And finally, when you let a balloon go with air in it, the air coming out of the back of the balloon is the action, which causes the balloon to move forward, which is the reaction. Remember, Newton's third law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The formula that we will use is P equals MV, where P is momentum in kilograms times meters per second, M is mass in kilograms, and V is velocity in meters per second. We can solve this formula by knowing two of the variables and solving for the third. An easy way to solve this formula is to use the triangle setup shown here. When using the triangle, all you have to do is cover up the letter you are solving for, and the triangle will tell you whether to multiply or divide. If I am solving for momentum, I cover up the P, and the triangle tells me to multiply mass times velocity. I know this because the variables are next to each other. If I'm solving for mass, I'll cover up the M, and the formula tells me to, to do momentum divided by velocity. I know this because the variable P is on top of the variable V. And finally, if I'm solving for velocity, I cover up the letter V, and the triangle tells me to divide momentum by mass. And I know this because the variable P is on top of the variable M. Now let's look at some practice problems. In our first example, the question says a 4,000 kilogram truck travels in a straight line at 10 meters per second. What is the momentum? So using my triangle, I will cover up the letter P because P represents momentum and the question is asking me to solve for momentum. So from my triangle, I can see that P is going to be equal to mass times velocity. And I know that because the M and V are next to each other. So I can write my formula P equals MV. And then all I need to do is plug in my mass and velocity from the problem. So I can plug in the mass of 4,000 kilograms and the velocity of 10 meters per second. After that, I then just put it in my calculator where I can do 4,000 times 10, which gives me a final answer of 40,000 kilograms times meters per second. In the next example, the question says a beach ball is rolling in a straight line towards you at a speed 0.5 meters per second. Its momentum is 0.25 kilograms times meters per second. What is the mass of the beach ball? So looking at my triangle, I'll cover up the letter M, which tells me to do P divided by V. So I can write my formula M equals P divided by V, and then I can find the momentum and the velocity from the question and plug those into my formula. So I'll put 0.25 divided by 0.5. I can then plug this into my calculator and get an answer of 0 0.5 kilograms. In the final example, the question says an eight kilogram bowling ball is rolling in a straight line towards you. If its momentum is 16 kilograms times meters per second, how fast is it traveling? So looking at my triangle, I can cover up the letter V and that will tell me to do P divided by M. So I can write my formula V equals P divided by M. And then all I have to do is plug in the numbers from the problem. So I will plug in 16 for P and eight for M. Now I can just put this in my calculator and do 16 divided by eight to get a final answer of two meters per second. Now you know how to solve the equation P equals MV. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to help us be able to produce more helpful science content. If there's a specific topic you need help with, please let us know in the comments.